Hey there, it's time for another Thea Talks. This week we're going to be talking about hidden sugar. When we talk about losing weight, a lot of people reference fat and carbohydrates as something that you need to cut down on to lose the excess fat. But a lot of people neglect the fact that sugar contributes to a lot of weight gain. So I'm going to reference a few things that have hidden sugar in it that you may not know. So first off, the recommended amount of sugar that you should be having is about 25 grams for women and 36 grams for men each day. And 25 grams is really not that much considering the amount that Americans usually eat. So sugar is this little kind of like crystalline substance that usually comes from like um, sugar cane or like sweet beets or something. And it can be processed and you know, you have white sugar, you have cane sugar, you have coconut sugar. There's different forms of sugar from different plants that you can get it from. But sugar, in a sense, is just this crystalline sweet substance that comes from plants. Now, when sugar enters your body, it turns into something called glucose. And glucose will give you energy to work off throughout the day. Now, if you're not exercising or working off that energy, that glucose is going to turn into a fat reserve or an energy reserve rather, and it's going to turn into fat. An energy reserve in our body is fat. So in a sense, when we're eating too much sugar and we're not constantly active and working off of that energy that the glucose is providing us, is going to your body is going to store it for later use because that's what our body does. It stores energy for later use. And then if we don't, if we continuously have high sugar levels or high glucose level, levels rather, and we're not continuously working that off, it's going to build and build and build. That energy reserve is going to keep on building. And so it's kind of like the same thing with um, carbohydrates too. Carbohydrates break down into glucose. And it's the same exact thing. If your body's not uh, using that reserve energy is going to turn it into fat for when it might need it and that fat is just going to build and build and build if you're not constantly uh, working that off and uh, with exercise or decreasing your caloric intake or something like that. So that's a little background on sugar and how it can contribute to weight gain. So I'm just going to do a quick rundown of a couple of foods that you might not know have as much sugar as you think that they might. So for one, we have barbecue sauce, and if you make homemade barbecue sauce, you know that you're going to be putting a lot of sugar in that. So that's one thing if you want to lose weight that you might want to reconsider when you're barbecuing. I know we all love barbecue sauce. I love it just the same, but you're adding a whole lot of sugar into that barbecue sauce. And another thing is going to be yogurt. Traditional yogurt, like with the stuff in the fruit in the bottom, does have a lot, a lot of sugar. And there's about an average of 19 grams of sugar in just one little like a uh, Danon or Yoplait cup of, a sh of a yogurt. And so when I said the average is 26 grams of sugar, if you're getting 19 grams just from one cup of yogurt, it's not really worth it because you're already eating over half of your daily recommended amount of sugar intake. Um, another thing is Chinese takeout. A lot of Chinese food has um, cut out MSG, but there is still a lot of sugar content like sweet and sour chicken or anything sweet and sour or something that has like some sweet taste. There's a whole bunch of sugar put into those products just to satisfy a palate. I do remember a research study that said that um, American Chinese food obviously is not like um, China. <laughs> food the chinese really don't eat chinese food that they just eat food but americanized chinese food does add a lot of more sugar than the people in china would eat their their food is more vegetable based and i don't want to say it's bland it's not bland i've been to china it's not bland at all but they use more spice than they do sugar Another thing is going to be pasta sauce. For every half cup, there's about 12 grams of sugar in pasta sauce. Again, if you're making something like this homemade, you are the recipe is probably going to call for sugar anyways. And this is a funny thing. Um, if you are in kind of like in the, the Z or the X generation and you're into Facebook, you saw this thing on Facebook where people were talking about adding sugar, sugar or salt into their grits. And then it turned into something where people were talking about if you put sugar in your pasta or in your spaghetti, then you're in the same boat as like whichever side that they don't like for the grits debate. And I kept on trying to tell people like there's sugar in pasta sauce anyway. So everyone likes sugar in their pasta sauce because if you, if you have a, a jar of pasta sauce, it has sugar in it to begin with. 
So it really doesn't matter if you like sugar in your spaghetti or not because you're eating it regardless if you have red tomato pasta sauce in it. Of course, there's tea, the sweet tea. If you're from the South, you love sweet tea and there's only certain people who can make a good sweet tea, but you already know that it's laden with a lot of sugar. And then there's, of course, the soda. We're not even going to get into how much sugar is in soda. Now, there's dried fruit, like raisins, dried apricots, dried bananas. Um, what else is there? Dried cranberries. Unfortunately, those do have a lot of sugar in those as well. With dried fruits, obviously, they're dehydrated, so it's really just the fruit and the flesh that's in there. But to make them more appealing and more appetizing, manufacturers do add a lot of sugar. There can be as much as 24 grams of sugar and just a third cup of, let's say, raisins or dried cranberries, and that's a lot. 21 grams of sugar. For women, we only need 26 grams of sugar, and for men, it's 36. So you see, that's way over the daily amount that we need in the first place. Now one thing that might be surprising for you, it might not be, is granola bars. Even the healthy granola bars like Nature's Valley do have a lot of sugar in them unfortunately. If it has something like oats and honey, that sugar is coming from the honey. Um, there's really not a lot of ways to get around a lot of sugar in granola bars because most of the granola bars out there are going to have sugar in it. But if you're watching your weight or trying to decrease the amount of sugar intake, you just might want to be aware of that because a bar can have as many as 12 grams of sugar in there. So you just need to make sure that you're not eating a lot of sugar for the rest of the day or just keep it within your limit. Something else that might not be surprising are fruit juices and fruit drinks. Number one, you need to be drinking 100% fruit juice, number one, just get that one out the way. But then if you go to somewhere like a smoothie bar or something like that, be aware of the sugar content of the smoothie that you're drinking, even green smoothies that have a, an apple or banana in there to kind of sweeten it up. Just make sure if you're aware of the sugar content so you can keep within your daily limit of grams of sugar throughout the day. I'm not against smoothies at all. I personally drink a green smoothie every single morning and I love them and I'm an advocate for green smoothies or smoothies in themselves but people who get like fruit only smoothies so much sugar in it natural sugar granted yes which is better than processed sugar but it's still sugar and it's still going to turn into glucose and if you don't work that off it's going to turn into fat okay now, in the beginning of the video, I did mention carbohydrates and how they do turn into glucose too, but bread, like processed white bread, it does also have sugar in addition to the, the wheat and the, and the carbohydrates from, from the bread. So that's kind of like a double whammy. The bread already has carbohydrates, so it's going to break down into glucose, and then it has sugar in there that's going to break down into glucose. And then don't get me started on some type of like honey bread or cinnamon, uh, raisin swirl that has the dried fruit the cinnamon, the sugar, and the bread in there. There's kind of like, it's just a triple, quadruple whammy in, in hidden sugar. And last but not least is a lot of people's favorite pastime, cocktails. We all know, we've all heard that Mixed drinks and such have a lot of sugar content and alcohol is probably the worst way to go if you're trying to lose weight in terms of um, decreasing your caloric value and stuff like that. But I'm just here to reiterate it. If you do want to drink, I would go with something like a gin and tonic that's just alcohol and then non-sugar based carbonated water or something like that. Um, Mixed drinks, not so much because they're going to be mixed with a fruit juice or a fruit blend that's not even 100% juice or a soda or a mix of whatever else. And that's just the mixed drinks or the alcohol. If you're going with beer, that's a whole nother, it's a whole nother ball game. Beer can probably come in at around 20 grams of sugar for a pint, which a lot of people can down in one sitting, no problem. So again, like I've been saying throughout this whole video, just make sure that you keep a look out for how many grams of sugar and a serving of whatever you're consuming, whether it be a, a juice, a smoothie, a food, a, a drink, yogurt, breakfast bar, whatever. So you can keep within that daily limit of 25 grams for women, 36 grams for men per day of sugar. 
Obviously try to stay away from processed sugar. Natural sugar is the best. Now a lot of people would say that, oh, I'm just gonna have like a sugar substitute or I'm just gonna substitute like table sugar for honey and agave. Honey and agave still have so much sugar in them. So just because you're switching out table sugar for honey or agave doesn't mean that you're decreasing the amount of sugar that you are consuming. And just because you need less of an amount of honey or agave doesn't mean that that's not concentrated sugar. And just because you need, say, a few tablespoons rather than uh, like a third of a cup, you still might be getting the same amount of sugar between um, the substitute and not. And with sugar substitutes, there's so many be research being done with them contributing to cancer and headaches and all this other stuff. I would just say stay away from it unless you've been using it for so long and you're, you know, you're fine. I don't necessarily recommend sugar substitutes. That's just me. If you want to use them, go ahead. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But that is it. And that is it for this Thea Talks. And I will see you guys next week for a talk about carbohydrate, hidden carbs, because there are a lot of them, what they are, what they do in your body, and how carbohydrates are not bad for you. You need carbohydrates in your diet if you want to, to survive, okay? You're going to need to eat those. And doing a non-carb diet is probably the worst thing you can do to lose weight. So we're going to get into that on the next Thea Talks. If you can, like, comment, and subscribe to this channel so you can get updates to when the next Thea Talks. And for my 15-minute workouts, they'll be uploaded on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I will see you guys next Friday.